Hi everyone. So this video is about Param Copy, which is a plugin for Substance Designer. And with this plugin, you can copy parameters between nodes, and you can also store the states of, of uh, several nodes and then recall these states uh, later. And you can also change the random seeds of uh, various uh, nodes that you would have selected. So we're going to talk about all these. And first, we're going to see how we install the plugin. So with Substance Designer uh, launched, we just go into Tools, Plugin Manager. Here we go Install. And we select the SDE plugin file, which is in the uh, Param Copy package. And that's, that's all, in fact. So we have installed the plugin. We see it here in the plugin manager. It's loaded. Uh, if we want to disable it, we just uh, uncheck this and we can close this window. So what happened is that now we have um, a new menu, uh, param copy. And also when we'll be uh, creating a new graph or um, if we open a graph, we'll also have a toolbar. So let's do this. I'm going to open here the demo file. And so you can see we have new icons in, in the toolbar. So this top icon here is a toggle to display the other icons of a param copy or a hide them. All right, so let's look at these notes first. So these are just uh, tile generators generating just simple various designs. Okay, and they're connected to output nodes. So I'm going to show you how to store uh, variations, which are in fact um, node states. Uh, we can store into the variation the state of multiple nodes and, and then recall uh, the variation. So for this, uh, we just select in fact a set of nodes. So let me just select these three nodes and click this icon here, store variation. Uh, alternatively, we can also use variations, store variation here, or the, the keyboard shortcut. So let's go, and uh, I have to enter here a variation name. So I'm going to call this uh, default uh, state. And here I can select which uh, kind of parameters I want to store into the variation. So every um, every uh, node in Substance Designer or every graph have uh, both base parameters and specific parameters. So if we look at them here for the tile generator, we have the base parameters in this section. And then we have the instance parameters, which, which are also called specific parameters. That's for a param copy, that's the same thing, in fact. So base parameters are common to all the nodes in Substance Designer. They all have these uh, base parameters. They can have different values per node, but um, all these fields uh, exist for all the nodes. Whereas instance or specific parameters are specific to a specific type of node. So here I'm just going to leave the, the two checkboxes here uh, checked. So I, I will store both base parameters and specific parameters. I click OK. So I've stored the state and now I can make modifications so let's change, for instance, the amount in X and Y here. Uh, on this one, uh, something different. On this one, I can change also the amount. And maybe some things like this. whatever. So I have this, okay. So I'm going to store this state also, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I select three nodes, get here, and I'm going to call it um, modified state. Okay, so now let's click this other button, which is to recall variations. So with this, 
I can see the two states that I've uh, created default state and modified state. So let's restore the default state. For this, I'm going to check it and click Recall Variation. So I have a confirmation dialog that I can um, disable. I will show you how in Preferences. So say yes, I want to recall variations. And now you can see the, the three nodes have been uh, recalled into the state they were initially. And for the second state, here I can also recall it. And the, the changes I've made and saved for the second states are being uh, recalled. So I can do this for any number of nodes in my graph selectively. So this dialog here is a non-model, which means uh, I can still go into Substance Designer and do things okay, without closing it. Uh, I can also resize it. And I can also delete variations from here. So the ones that are selected will be deleted. And also I can delete all the variations with this button. And if I want to close the dialog, I just hit close and I can recall it anytime. Okay, so let's restore. I'm going to restore the, the initial variation. So to restore variations, I don't need to select anything, okay? Because I don't need to select nodes. I just recall the variation uh, by uh, opening this dialog box, variations, and selecting the variation I want to restore and recalling. Uh, I can also um, recall several variations at a time. So if you're making modifications, uh, for instance, you have a graph with uh, certain parts which are for uh, the layouts, the layout of your uh, items into your texture, and another part which is for the colors. You can save states for the layout and states for the colors. And then when you recall them, you can combine specific layouts with specific colors. You just need to select, in fact, multiple variations here, to check them and hit the recall button and it will recall all of them. So for now, I'll just recall the default state. And I'm going to disable these confirmations because they're a bit annoying. So for the preferences, I'm going to param copy preferences and it's this one, enable optional confirmations. I just disable this and hit OK. So now we're going to talk about the parameter copy and pasting. So I'm selecting this tile generator and I'm going to change the amount in X and in Y. Something like this. OK. Now I click on this button or I can do also param copy node parameters or use the shortcut. So this is the copy dialog, which is resizable. And we see in here uh, all the parameters of the node that we selected. Um, so things are being grouped by base parameters and specific parameters. And also inside each um, section, we can also have subgroups. Uh, they're the same as the one that we see here. So it depends, in fact, on how the node um, input parameters have been um, defined, whether they're in groups or not. If they're in groups, you will see the groups there. So um, we have checkboxes here, so we can select exactly the parameters we want to, to copy. If I uncheck this, everything below is going to be um, deselected. And same thing if I um, check this, everything is going to be selected. I can also use this button here, select all, deselect all, select all. And I can also collapse all the nodes and expand all the nodes. So let's deselect everything. And I want to, I want to copy here only the X amount and Y amount. So, okay. Now I'm selecting those two other nodes and I'll use the paste button. And I have the paste dialog. So in the paste dialog, I'm told that I have two parameters from a tile generator that are going to be pasted into two nodes. And I have the list of parameters 
or neither one, but I select it. At this point, I can still, if I want to, finally I changed my mind and I just want to page the X amount, I can just deselect the Y amount like this and, and only the X amount will be pasted. Well, let's say I want everything and I go OK. So now you see these two other tile samplers have been uh, pasted into the values of the X amount and Y amount that had been copied for, from this tile generator. OK, so again, let's restore the initial state. And by the way, I'm going to delete this modified state. I don't need it anymore. So let's restore this default state. And now I'm going to add a normal node and connect like this, for instance, or this, whatever. So I, I'm adding this node because this node is different. is a, It has different type. These were all tile sampler uh, tile uh, generators, and this one is a normal node. So we're going to see how things work when we're working with uh, nodes of different types. So the way uh, param copy is working in this case is that the base parameters are going to be copied regardless of the node type. So if I change, for instance, the output size in one node, I copy it and I paste it into all these other nodes, even the, if there are different types, the output size is going to be copied everywhere. However, if I change a specific parameter from the tile generator, then it's not going to be copied into the normal node because the normal node is a different type node, so it doesn't have the same parameters. So let's try this. Uh, let's select this one and change the output size. So I'm going to use here relative to parent. So this, in fact, is the um, inheritance method. That's the way it's called. So the, the base parameters can be made uh, either re relative to input or relative to parent or absolute. So when it's relative to input, it means that, uh, let's say I have whatever thing here. Um, you see this size generator has two inputs and one of them has a dot inside it. So it means that the tile generator, if it's configured to be uh, relative to input, is going to, for, for the output size, it means the its output size is going to be the same as the one of this input that is being connected to the connector with the dot in it. So if I change um, the properties of the output size of this one, then uh, this one is going to be changed also. Uh, the relative to parent property is, it means that um, this parameter is going to be uh, the same as its parent. So here, uh, the parent size is defined here. This is the size of the, um, the top size, in fact, of the graph, so 2k by 2k. And now you see when I uh, move uh, to relative to parent, I have 2k by 2k. And if I'm using absolute, I can define whatever size. It's not relative to anything. It's just the exact size that uh, I'm using here. So uh, this was to say that this, these properties, this method inheritance is also copied to other nodes. So if you want to change uh, just the method inheritance of, of a node and propagate it into other nodes, you can do it. So these nodes here are all, I think, relative to their inputs. Yeah, so we're going to change them into relative to parent. So I'm going to select this relative to parent. OK. And copy. Deselect all and just get the output size that we see here is relative to parent. We have all the inheritance methods here. OK, and I'm going to paste. So here I selected everything, even, even the source node. It doesn't matter because if um, well, it's going to be ignored, in fact. And uh, so even if by mistake you select the source node, it's uh, that's fine. So I'm going to paste the output size. And then all the others are now relative to, to parent. And same thing, if I change this, 
um, to absolute 256 by 256 and copy the output size paste, paste it everywhere they all become 256 by 256 um, something also that can be useful is that when you go for copy by default all the parameters are selected but sometimes you don't want to copy all the parameters but only specific ones so instead of having to deselect everything and then select the ones you want to copy what you can do you go into preferences and you uncheck this select all parameters by default on copy okay so now if i go on copy i have nothing selected i can directly select the, the parameters i want to copy so now another use case is that if you're using a blur node in fact these two nodes normal and blur both have an intensity parameter so let's see how uh, internally this is being made because what we're seeing here is the label of, of a parameter it, it's it's a displayable name but internally there is an identifier which is unique for um, a specific node type and uh, this identifier is uniquely referencing the the parameter and this is based on this identifier that the copies are being made so if i open the copy dialog on this and i click this show advanced options i can check this display parameter ids and now i can see the internal ids of the parameters and we can see that for the normal this intensity uh, parameter has an id called intensity okay now let's look at the blur node same thing it has the, the parameter id which is governing the intensity also has the same name intensity so that could be dangerous uh, using copy paste between these because they are both called intensity but they do, do not have the same meaning uh, if i use normal here and set the intensity to, uh, to two uh, it doesn't mean anything well it doesn't mean the same thing that putting two here for for a blur so to prevent any issues with this uh, param copy prevents copying specific parameters from one node type to another node type even if they if they are the same so let's uh, verify this i'm going into the normal here i'm going to so currently i have two in the intensity of the normal and i have two in the intensity of the blur so let's go into the normal let's move let's move this to three and copy the intensity now i select the blur I go paste the intensity I hit OK look at the intensity of the blur it's still 2 okay nothing has been copied because there are different node types however if I want I can override this behavior and force the copy of uh, specific parameters having the same IDs so for this I go into the paste dialog show advanced options and enable this enable pasting specific parameters with the same id for different type nodes so okay and now uh, the intensity has been has been moved to three so it doesn't make uh, a lot of sense for these two nodes because the, the intensity doesn't have the same meaning but uh, if you're using um, your own uh, substances or third-party substances which are of different types but have uh, a number of parameters which are identical and have the same meaning then this can be useful and I, I will show you an example of that with the uh, heron fur uh, which is another um, product I, I'm doing for um, to generate hair textures and this is uh, actually very useful for heron fur to be able to do this so now another case of um, specific pasting of parameters so let's say i'm going to modify uh, on this node um, the the output size by 4k to 1k okay so it looks like this i'm going to copy it
And now I want to paste it into all these other nodes. However, I just want to modify uh, this output size for the tile generators and not for the other uh, nodes. So if I want to do this, I'm going to use this option here, paste only into nodes of the same type as the source node. And this is important to, to do it in our case here because I'm pasting a base parameter and base parameters are being pasted regardless of the node type by default. But here I want to take the node type into account. So I use this option and hit OK. So now I have changed, as you can see, uh, the resolution on all the type generators, but the normal and the blur have been uh, unaffected. So now let's see other things uh, into another part of the graph. So here I'm having noises or patterns and they're being converted to, so they're initially they're grayscale and they're being converted to color using a gradient map. And then they've been assembled into tile generator color. So we can see all of them at once. So something uh, that can be useful, just a use case you may uh, want to use uh, in your graph is that uh, it's usually um, good to keep all the grayscale um, textures into 16 bits uh, during the graph because you have all the height information uh, properly. But when you convert to color, it's not that useful to have the color into 16 bits like, like here. So let's say in your graph you want to convert all the uh, the gradient maps node which are doing uh, conversion from grayscale to color and you want to convert them to uh, 8 bits so what you can do is just click one uh, gradient map in the output format you use absolute and you make sure that you have 8 bits per channel so you can see it here it's c8 and you copy Oops, I have to select it first. You copy first the output format of this node. And then you you select, well, you can select everything because we're going to copy only into, to paste, I mean, only into the nodes of the same type. So we have this checked, paste only into nodes of the same type. So only the gradient maps are going to be affected. And there we have all our gradient maps which have been uh, now converted to 8 bits. So now the functionality of RAM copies to um, change the values of random seeds of, of nodes. So if I go there on the cloud one, in the base parameters, I have this random seed, which can be changed like this. And as you can see, it changes the, the noise generation because all the random parameters that are going to be used by this node are, are affected by the random seed. So if I change the random seed, random values of um, uh, the random parameters are also changing. So if I want to change this uh, random seed and actually uh, choose a random one for uh, any uh, number of nodes, I can select the nodes I want to change the seed and click this uh, dice here. So there, as you can see, they're all changing with random values at the same time. And so I can change the randomness like this of multiple nodes only the nodes I select, in fact, in, in, into my graph. So for this functionality, we can use a confirmation. So if you want a confirmation, just to make sure that you're not hitting this button uh, by mistake, you can go preferences and enable optional confirmations. So now it's going to ask you whether you really want to change the random seeds. And if you don't want it anymore, you just disable confirmations. So now I'm going to show you how this uh, plugin can be used for Heronfer. So this is mostly for people using Heronfer, but uh, this can be also interesting for your own uh, substances because the same principles may, may apply. So here I have a small graph with a few instances of Heronfer. So I have four of them. So uh, if we look at, I'm in compact material mode, I'm going to go to standard so we better see what's happening. So each uh, instance of Heronfer here is connected uh, 
has in fact the depth and uh, ID outputs uh, enabled. The depth is connected to this is an output just to see it in fact and both the ID and, out, and uh, depth outputs of each heron for instance is uh, being connected to global tiler which is tiling the, the maps and outputting a tiled maps for the ID for the ID and for the depth. So the ID map looks like that and the depth map looks like that. And with these nodes I can visualize every uh, hair texture independently. So let's go back to compact material. So we have less um, uh, connections on the graph. And I'm going to visualize this, the tiled map, the tiled depth map. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to store the states. So store variation for all the all these nodes. So here, uh, original states. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm going to delete this default state here because this was what we did earlier. And I have just this original state. So here we have uh, four instances four instances of heron fur, but amongst them we have one which is heron fur freestyle. So heron fur freestyle is, uh, let's look at it, um, is basically the same uh, than heron fur, but we have uh, controls directly into the 2D view, like this. So uh, it's actually a different uh, node type. Uh, most of its parameters are common, but some of them are different. And this is why um, the ability to paste into, well, to paste specific parameters into nodes of different types is useful for this kind of uh, situation when we have um, substances which have a lot of parameters in common, except for a few ones. So we want still to be able to copy and paste between those um, substances, even if they are not of the same type. And this is the same case for the tiling that we'll see also just afterwards. So for now, um, let's focus on these. So let's say I want to change the density of hair into all the hair textures at once. So for this, I'm going to go on the first one and go into child strands and reduce this to like 60, it was um, 100 before. And you see it has changed here. I have that, well, let's reduce this even more, 40. Okay, so now I'll, I'll go copy. And I'm going to look for the child strands. Where is it? Here, child strand count. Okay, I'm going to copy just this. And now I'm going to paste. So I'm not going to paste into the braid here because the the braid is is using only one strand, so it doesn't have any child strands. I don't want to modify this. So I'm going to paste only into those two. And those two nodes are of different type, okay? One is freestyle, the other one is the regular Haranfer. So paste and enable pasting into nodes of different types. So OK. OK, and you can see the three here have uh, less hair now because I've reduced the, the count of child strands. So another thing I can do is, uh, like, let's say uh, I want to modify. So I'm going to go select this and I, I want to modify the shape of this hair. So I'm going to change the control points, uh, horizontal positions, something like that. I'm going to copy the control points, so I need to find them. Control points, position here. So here I have actually two sets of positions because uh, the first ones are being used for the regular um, 
parent for instances and the other ones are being used for freestyle but uh, I'm not going to paste into freestyle so we can safely uh, just select all the positions and click OK and now we're going to paste them into these two nodes so not the freestyle one and uh, let's do this so let's first look at the tiling result so I'll select those two nodes paste okay and you see they've adopted the same shape as the first node so that's the kind of use case you can uh, you can apply to her and fur and quickly change or propagate some uh, changes uh, from one design into others and another uh, so let's uh, restore this yeah we can recall now this, the original state recall variation and we're back with our original state uh, and another use case um, which is uh, interesting is is for the tiling so for the tiling uh, imagine that here so the tiling is being made by this instance here global tiler and imagine that we have uh, as output of each heron for instance we have instead of having as uh, of now only two maps id and depth imagine that we have uh, five or six or seven we may have a color map we can have a flow map we can have several maps and instead of having four instances Im imagine that we have like 20 and all these being tiled at the same time uh, it takes uh, time in fact it's uh, it's a long process so it's not very convenient to operate on the tiling parameters with so much data uh, as input so a way to work around this is to export a specific type here I've exported uh, only the depth map uh, so I've exported them into bitmaps and then I've loaded them back here into resources so what we see here are just bitmaps and I'm going to tile them with a tiler grayscale which is tiling just one type of map and in this case if I'm using this so let's look at the result I've been doing this into a texture which is 4k by 2k so it's not square and if I change the spacing and this kind of thing it's it's very things are going very fast so this is uh, easy to to set things up like that I can like do rotation let's rotate uh, maybe this one just like that so I'm making all these modifications but now so I have a lot of settings that I can modify in this because I can do individual positioning so once I did I did this I want to move these parameters back into the global tiler because this was just a temporary step I, I was doing here just to get the right tiling parameters now I, I want to set these parameters into the global tiler so Previously, we had to do this uh, manually by uh, checking which parameter we had in the tile grayscale and then uh, one by one uh, reporting them into the global tile. But now with the copy functionality, uh, we can do that very quickly. So let me go select this uh, global tiler and go copy. So I'm going to select everything and copy and there I go paste I'm enabling the pasting of specific parameters into uh, nodes of different type because the source node was a tiler grayscale and and the destination node is a global tiler so they are of different type and I just go paste and now as you can see both my ID map and my depth map and basically any map that I would have uh, inputted into my global tiler I have adopted the same properties as the one I tiled here so these are the kind of use cases you can do for hand for 
And basically for your own substances, if you have the same concepts of having uh, similar parameters between uh, different substances. So thank you for watching and I hope this little plugin will be useful to you.